Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders for KW Bonsai. I'm here with Dandelion on a wet, cool day in summer. Uh, the daytime high I think was, well it's about 16 degrees right now, so it's pretty cool. Hi. Um, so I thought on this wet, cloudy, rainy day that we would uh, check into the world of willow bonsais. Uh, weeping willows, black willows. So we're gonna look at my willow tree and check out some full-size trees and show you how to start your own willow bonsai. We're on location in Stratford, Ontario, Canada at the Avon River and I thought what better place to look at willow trees than in Stratford. So here we are. Uh, the first one we're going to look at is actually a black willow and we're going to check out some of the details on it. So if we go right up to the root base here, you'll see it has uh, some really fantastic uh, roots. Uh, you'll notice that there's a hollow section here and that happens a lot in willows is that one branch or trunk will die off and the wood gets really soft with all the moisture and starts rotting and then the roots from the adjacent area start growing into that rotted section and they actually replace what was there as a dead part of the tree with live roots. So you get this fantastic effect of roots going from everywhere and it's, it's really neat. So here's the other side of the tree and you can see the same type of thing has happened that parts of the tree that have died rotted away and all that's left are the roots that were growing in the rotted section so we get all these fantastic root formations. Here's one over this side that you can see it's rotting away but uh, you can see there's a root growing down into the rotted section. So let's go up and see what the top of the tree looks like. So it's got twin trunks, pretty rough bark. It's got a dead section up here, here. And you can see from behind it is a new leader growing. Uh, whenever it, you get a windstorm, these trees tend to lose a lot of branches. Uh, there's one over here. You see it's all cracked and it's gonna probably fall off in the next windstorm. And uh, you get a lot of weeping branches. This one here weeps down towards the water. Uh, some on the other side of the tree are more upright. But uh, basically it's a, a fairly upright structure. Here's the overall picture of the tree now. You can see there's a lot of dead branches on the top. It's getting pretty old that one. But there's still lots of vigor and health in it. Here's another black willow. Um, it used to be a quite a big tree, but the uh, main tree has died, and all that's left now is all these shoots that sprouted from the stump. They've uh, grown, and the original trunks rotted away. You can see there's a bit of it left here, but yeah, everything that's growing now is just sprouts from the original trunk where it got cut off or blew down in a storm and they're getting pretty big they'll uh, that'll grow a big tree again from the same stump. Here's one of the probably the oldest uh, weeping willow tree in the park. Um, I thought I better photograph it before it uh, dies which I'm sure it will eventually. Um, it's really old. Uh, let's go have a look at the trunk of this thing. So here we are. Here's the base of it. And you can see the 
trunk is covered in tumors of some sort and it goes all the way up and it's really gnarled and just full of interest. Um, I don't know if you'd ever get a trunk like this on a bonsai tree or a miniature tree, but uh, wow, it's just out of this world, this thing. Uh, so it's got pretty uh, short, fat branches. Most of the long ones have been ripped off by the wind. It's got quite a side branch here that goes out over the water. All the foliage is drooping. But you'll notice, um, even though the foliage droops, the branches, if we go up top here, are still pretty upright. So I think when you're styling a weeping willow, it's a common mistake to have every branch weep. And they just don't do that in nature. The basic form of the tree is an upright tree. And all the branches go fairly upright. And all that droops really is the newer foliage. Here's this uh, old weeping willow from a different angle. Uh, it's really fat at the base. You can see, you know, it's just wild. Look at that, eh? So typical of the willow trees is they tend to sprout from the base of the trunk quite often. The tree's always trying to grow new branches. Some are successful, some aren't. The tumors go pretty well all the way up the trunks, quite high. It's just loaded with texture, this tree. Really fascinating. So from this magnificent old willow tree, I'm gonna, I didn't bring any pruners with me, but I'm gonna break off a branch, probably one from way over here that I can reach. I'm gonna break a branch off and take it home with me. And we'll put it in, uh, in water. And we'll try and grow a tree in memory of the grand old willow. So here we are, we've got this magnificent old tree and I've got a branch off it. Let me just put it on the ground, show you what it looks like. There's the branch off it. So we're gonna stick that in some water and grow roots and uh, make it into a bonsai tree. Here's a small willow with a thick trunk. It's almost the size of a bonsai tree. Um, you can see, it's not very big. Uh, if you do chop the trunk on a willow, you'll get a lot of sprouting at your cut mark. And that's what's happened with this tree. It was probably quite large and it's got a chopped trunk and it's grown a whole bunch of new branches and trunks coming off of it. Yeah, nice little willow. Here's some examples of some deadwood on willows where we've got, you know, a section of the tree that's died and it's rotting away and the rest of the tree is rolling around on the the wound and it'll roll completely over eventually and form quite an interesting trunk um, and you can see there's some pretty cool stuff happening with the bases of these trees here's a willow with a rather unusual feature higher up on the tree. So if we go up to, whoa! <laughs> There's a swan carved in the top of the tree. While we're in Stratford, we have to show some swans, of course. Uh, so here's a little willow tree that's just been planted. Uh, it's got a pretty cool base. And so you can see, even at a young age, the trees get quite nice bark on them. Right, guys? <laughs> you coming over to see me? 
No. You kind of have to be careful of the swans. They, uh, they'll run after you if they're nesting. You don't want to get too close to them, especially if you don't have food. But generally they're pretty friendly. Right guys? Yeah, you said so. Here's the base of a multi-trunk black willow. You can see it's got really strong surface roots. Lots of nice texture. You can see the bark on the weeping willows isn't quite as deeply fissured or cracked as the black willow trees. Uh, and it's also a lighter color. So the black willows definitely have probably the more interesting bark, but they don't have quite as, uh, you know, they don't get those nice weeping branches that the uh, weeping willows get. Here's a black willow that uh, I really like the style of it. Uh, it'd make a great bonsai tree. It's got uh, low spreading branches. It's got a nice crown. Uh, it's got a bit of dead wood up there, but not too much. The tree's really healthy. Yeah, so I just thought I'd uh, show that because it's quite a nice looking tree. Just passing by some cute baby ducks. <laughs> Couldn't resist taking a picture of them. Hi mama. Bye. So that's our uh, tour of willow trees for today. There's a grove of willows as far as the eye can see there. Um, yeah, so let's go uh, back to the bonsai bench and check out our willows. Hi, so we're, we're back from our willow expedition in the park. Uh, here's my branch that I just tore off another branch on that magnificent old willow tree. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm just going to cut the top off this plastic container. There we go. We cut the top off finally. Um, so this is what we're going to grow our roots in for this willow tree. Um, you want a container that's kind of fairly wide at the top because if you have a narrow top in the container, once it grows its roots, you can't get them out. So, yeah, either, uh, you know, something with a big, big mouth on it. So we've got our, yeah, we've got our, our cutting here. So the first thing we want to do, I just ripped this off the branch. It snapped quite easily. So we want you these chickens. The chickens always hang around when I make a video. So I want to I want to make a nice clean cut on the bottom where we're going to grow our roots at the bottom of the trunk. So there we go. And then. Uh, it's got a dead branch in here. I can cut that off. Well, it wasn't totally dead, sorry. <laughs> it had a live branch there. Cut it off. And we'll do the same here. We'll just cut them back to pretty close to the trunk. And again here. So basically we're left with a stick. And we're gonna stick the stick in the in our container and fill it with water. I use rainwater. I think it's better than our hard tap water. And that's about it. So you just stick it in the water. You can leave it out in full sun and it'll grow roots, hopefully. So this is our old willow tree, the beginnings of it, and we'll uh, keep track of it. We'll do updates on how it's doing and see if we can grow it, in, grow it into a magnificent old willow bonsai. I've cut out a piece of styrofoam that'll fit in the top of the container with, that's filled with water. And if we just stuck the cutting in, it would grow roots, but it would grow them everywhere on the trunk. We just want our roots to form at the bottom of the stick. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna poke a hole in the styrofoam and just stick the bottom portion of the trunk that we want to grow the roots into the water. And the advantage with styrofoam is as your water level goes up and down, as it dries out, 
it'll float with it. So you'll always keep that section of the trunk in the water. So we're going to try and poke a hole in it. Go in from both sides. Like that. And then we'll stick our, our trunk through. About there. And then we'll float it in the water. Here's an older weeping willow that I've been growing for quite a few years now. Um, it's, uh, it was planted in this pot, uh, I, I think about two years ago. Um, I was trying to keep the soil really moist by watering it quite often, you know, like on a hot day, three or four times a day. But it still wasn't growing very well. Um, Willows need a lot of water. Uh, two reasons. On a hot day, they actually, the water comes up the tree and out to the foliage, which cools it. And it actually, if you stand under a willow tree on a hot day, it, it's almost like it's raining. There's a mist coming down from the leaves. So it needs a lot of water to keep it cool. Uh, willows like full sun. Uh, if there's any branches that are shaded out by ones above, they get weak very quickly and die off. Uh, it's always looking for the maximum light it can get. Um, so this year, I, I've been growing this a lot of years and every year I get dieback. Uh, you can see part of the main trunk here is died back and a new shoot has taken over. And that's part of growing a willow is uh, the tree almost designs itself. You can't pick and choose branches because they could be growing really well one year and then the next year they might not come out in spring or they might die back. Um, so when you're growing a willow tree don't fall in love with any branch on it because they could die off. Um, generally as a branch gets stronger its chances of living are living into the next year are greater, but not always. Um, so this year I've tried putting the tree in a pot of water and we'll zoom in and have a look at that. So the trunk's starting to get some nice bark on it and it's starting to get some surface roots. So here's the uh, here's the pot of water I have underneath it. And I have a clear container so I can see if roots are going down out of the pot through the drainage hole into the water. Uh, I keep this full so it's uh, up to the level of the bottom of the pot at all times and the pot draws the moisture up into the surface. Uh, and I keep this water fertilized so I, I mix fertilizer in with it. So the tree's constantly being fed and it's constantly getting water. And since I've done this, the tree is growing way better than it ever did in just the pot. Um, I would say probably 200% more. It's, uh, all the branches are coming out nice and vigorous. I, I have done some pruning on it. I'm going to do some more. And it seems to be reacting really well to the pruning. Um, even these branch tips that I've cut off are starting to back bud. There's new branches coming out. So, yeah, I, uh, I would highly recommend growing your willows with a pot of water underneath them. Uh, the other thing you can do, uh, I've read in some of the magazines that uh, you can have a drip system. So your trees are always being fed water and fertilizer from a, a hose. And that works probably even better, but uh, this is a pretty good solution. The only disadvantage with having a pot under your tree is that it will fill with roots eventually. Um, it hasn't yet, and it's been in this pot of water for about a month now. So I imagine the roots are filling up the pot. Uh, this large wound in the tree wasn't created by me, but I like it. What happened was the 
tree, when it was overwintered in the ground, a mouse chewed off half the bark on one side of the tree. And you can see it's rolling over and healing nicely. And it actually adds some good character to the tree. So I like it. The mouse did a good job. So this tree is a weeping willow, but what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm trying to grow the upright structure of the tree first. I'm not worrying about, you know, getting the foliage to droop on the tree at this point in time. I envision uh, this tree to be twice the size it is now. And when I get, you know, a big trunk, lots of structure to the tree, lots of upright structure to the tree, and then I'll start training the new growth to droop uh, or weep, just as we see on the full-size weeping willows. Uh, one thing I've noticed about the willows, when you're pruning the tree, um, I would let it, you know, you can let it grow and prune it for July and August. But starting in September, I would definitely stop pruning the tree. Um, you want to build up vigor in the tree for its uh, overwintering. And if you prune into September, you'll find a lot of those branches could die off. They just haven't got enough strength in them. The tree will say, well, that branch wasn't any good in the first place, so it'll grow another one somewhere else. So the tree's always growing branches, especially in spring. They just sprout out everywhere. So as long as the branch has sunlight and uh, you know you don't prune too late in the year the branches have a good chance of survival come next spring. So we'll follow this tree. Um, I'm going to give it a light pruning now and uh, we'll check in when that's done. Um, I'll just show you what I'm going to do. So basically you can see the leader has grown quite long and I think that's long enough and we're gonna cut it off. So again, when you're pruning it, you can go right down to, you know, the first set of leaves or second set of leaves. You can directional prune whatever way you want it to grow. So I kind of want my leader to be upright so I'm gonna prune it off here. And I'm gonna shorten some of these longer branches. They're starting to overshadow the branches underneath, which is, we don't want that. Uh, it'll cause the branches underneath to weaken and die. So we're going to cut these back to a, you know, a reasonable point. Cut this one first here. It's hard to do this with one hand. There we go. And here. And here, and here, and here, here. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just, you know, basically trimming it up, shortening all these new, this new growth and doing some directional pruning. And you don't have to be really fussy at this point in the tree's life about you know wiring your branches in the exact position because chances are the branch you wire will probably probably die off they don't like being wired it's not to say you can't wire them but they prefer not to be wired they prefer just to grow so at this point in the tree's life, it doesn't need any wiring. Um, when you do get to the point where you want the, you know, you've built your upright structure and you want your branches to start weeping to give it that weeping willow look, um, what some people have done is they've placed a ball of uh, Play-Doh, wrapped it around the branch tip, and it just gives it enough weight for it to weep on its own. And that's, that's a good way to train the tree. Um, and then once that branch gets a little older, it'll harden off in that weeping position. But again, you don't want, you want to build your upright structure first. You don't want it 
all weeping or to look like a weeping mulberry or a weeping birch or something like that, not a weeping willow. A weeping willow should have its upright structure and then arch over and weep. Okay, so I've pruned the, the willow up and uh, yeah, it looks a little more compact. I've trimmed some of the longer branches at the top so they're not shading out some of the lower ones. And that's, uh, that's about all we'll do for now. And uh, we'll uh, check in on the tree's progress from time to time. See how it's doing with its new pot of water underneath it. And we'll just uh, give it lots of water and fertilizer. See how it does. Okay, Nigel Saunders for KW Bonsai. We'll see you next time. Bye.